Archie Comics. Archie has been around for over 75 years. I think that's a huge accomplishment to be on newsstands for over 75 years in terms of like not just one monthly comic, but a whole range of titles. You know, Betty and Veronica and Reggie and all those characters from Riverdale are in monthly comics. That's amazing. Now, you might be asking, is Archie still relevant? That's a fair question. I mean, it's pretty old. But maybe you've seen this week the trailers for the CW's new live-action show. Now, that looks a little bit more like maybe Twin Peaks or Veronica Mars than what you might think of as Archie. But there's a reason for that. See, a lot of us have in our minds, if we think about Archie, we think about the Archie that was published from about 1960 to the, uh, to the aughts. And that's because there was a house style. Artist Dan DiCarlo produces the version of Archie that we're used to. And they were short little vignettes that would just, you know, tell some gags and be over. There wasn't necessarily a continuity. But five or six years ago, Archie started publishing comics with a more dramatic bent, with ongoing storylines. And last year, Mark Wade and Fiona Staples relaunched Archie with an ongoing Archie and, you know, his other friends titles. It's pretty different, and I'm curious, does it still have the same tropes that Archie used to have? So today, I'm going to do something interesting. We're going to list the tropes in a second, but every time I come across a trope, I will eat a cheeseburger like Jughead Jones. Jughead is known for loving hamburgers, eats them all the time. I've cooked up a bunch here. We're going to see how many of these I eat throughout this episode. First thing we need to do, though, is uh, let's go to the comic book store, pick up a comic. In the mid-70s, Xanadu opened up in downtown Seattle. At the time, there were only something like three comic book stores, including it. And so it's been here a long time. At one point, they actually had two stores, one here and one in the University District. But, you know, times are a little tougher now, and they're down to just one location, but it's a beautiful location. I'm sorry, I'm right in the heart of downtown Seattle, so there's no way to avoid all the, uh, the buses and traffic and people. Uh, Anyway, great store. One reason I really like it is they have a ton of not only indie comics, but specifically local talent that um, they feature on a wall. I think that's fantastic. It's really, really cool. Anyway, um, today we're going to look for one of the new Archie comics. I'm sure they'll have it. They have just about everything you could imagine. Let's go in and grab it. All right, so there I went to Xanadu Comics. Oh my gosh, that is an awesome, awesome comic book store. It's so much bigger than you'd expect. They have a really diverse line. They carry so much. It's fantastic. Um, they're right downtown in easy walking distance of Pike Place Market. But if you don't know about it, it's kind of easy to miss because it isn't necessarily on one of those main streets. Uh, so they're in a little bit of tough times right now. They're having a lot of sales and stuff. And I'll have a link in the description to um, their site, because they've got a lot of good deals and sales that you might be interested in. Anyway, let's get on uh, to Archie. I'm going to read issue number two of the Mark Wade series. Uh, that's in the trade paperback I just picked up. But first, let's quickly list some of the tropes you could always expect to find in any given Archie comic book. Misunderstandings as plot points. Archie has a terrible car. Alliterative character names. Jughead loves eating. Characters break the fourth wall. Schemes backfiring. Archie being clumsy or breaking something belonging to Mr. Lodge. Stories starting at the status quo and not continuing. Dilton talking loquaciously or inventing something sci-fi. Betty being an expert mechanic. Reggie pranking the gang. Look, there's probably a few more that I could list, but those are some big ones that you could easily come across if you ever picked up, say, like a Digest book on the grocery store, like at the last minute, you, you usually see those comics. Let's see if they're in this more modern story. The story kicks off with Archie trying to get a job on a construction site, and his best friend Jughead is telling him, like, no way. And uh, if we look closely, we can see that what's being built is Lodge Manor. Basically, Veronica and her family haven't quite come to town yet. They're not in the first issue. They're going to be the new people in town. 
From there, we get Archie telling Jughead that he needs to earn money, and Jughead is arguing, quite sensibly, that money isn't necessarily going to solve his problems. From there, Archie starts talking to us, the reader, directly, and tells us why Jughead feels this way. It's basically because Jughead grew up with a lot of money, but then his father invested in a pyramid scheme of some sort, something to do with jugs of water, and he ended up poor, and all the kids started calling him Jughead. Jughead Jones. That's not his given name. His given name is Forsyth P. Jones, but he actually has taken to liking being called Jughead. He's taken that abuse and he said, no, I'm going to own that. But anyway, right in these first few pages, we come across two tropes, and that's good because I'm hungry. Breaking the fourth wall, Archie's talking directly to us, and Jughead loves eating. When we see him as a child, he's eating a big old cheeseburger. That's what he's always doing. So, I get, I get to eat two of these burgers. I'm halfway through one burger, and I'm realizing that I don't have a humongous appetite. Like, all of a sudden, I eat burgers, and I love cheeseburgers, but this is a hell of a lot of potential food to eat. Here. This reminds me, um, one time I was hanging out with some friends. My friend Joe bet my friend Rusty that he couldn't eat four bags of Wonder Bread. Rusty loves Wonder Bread. We sat down in a park one day, spent hours watching him eat four loaves of Wonder Bread. He slowed way down after the first one, but he got through it. And then he threw up. Number two, my mouth is drying out. I'm afraid I'm gonna get heartburn. While I've been eating, I realized that there's another trope his name was changed to Jughead Jones. That's an alliterative name. Just like Archie Andrews and Dilton Doily. That means I gotta eat a third burger after I finish this second one. <clears throat> Two alliterative names. Archie keeps talking to us, the viewer, telling us that he just wants an income, he needs some money, and we see a montage of him with various jobs, and we establish yet another trope. Archie is super clumsy. I didn't read a ton of Archie growing up. My sister would get some Archie comics, mostly because I got comics and she wanted to get something to do with me, and I would read to her sometimes. I never really realized how clumsy Archie is, but if you go back to his very first appearance, He's clumsy right off the bat. That's definitely some, a defining characteristic. Burger number four. This feels like work now. My mouth isn't generating enough saliva to, for the bun. It's getting harder and harder to eat them. In the next page, we finally see why Archie wants to earn money. It's because his car is in really bad shape. His car has always been terrible. It needs a fix-up, and he says he's lost his best mechanic, which is his uh, former girlfriend, Betty Cooper, the girl next door. So, we hit a couple more tropes. <coughs> oh, my God. We've got Archie's crappy car. His, it used to be called a jalopy. That's pretty dated, but anyway, he's got a bad car, and Betty was his uh, mechanic. Because Betty has always been a little bit of a tomboy. She's interested in stuff like mechanics and that. Anyway, what's interesting about this is it is sort of subverting our expectations of what you get out of Archie. As in, it's not a little vignette. This is a continued storyline from what we learned in the first issue, where Betty and Archie have been dating, excuse me, forever, and... Um, Something happened that they call the lipstick incident. They say that it's nobody's fault, but there was something called the lipstick incident, which split them up. Now, a bunch of Archie and Betty's friends are trying to put them back together, and for some reason, Jughead isn't. Uh, we'll learn why through the course of uh, the story, maybe not in this particular issue. But anyway, so we hit two tropes. That means two more burgers somehow. I'm going to keep talking about the issue while I eat these burgers, unless I come across another trope. Apparently, Betty went out on a date with Trevor, another classmate, but...
But um, as soon as he gets a tiny bit handsy, she kicks him out. She's not too interested in moving on yet. Betty's friend Sheila comes over, and uh, she wants to dress her up all glamorous for the uh, school dance. Get her to go out and make Archie jealous, maybe. Or at least find somebody new. And that's not really Betty's thing, but she gives it a try uh, to pretty hilarious results. I gotta say, Fiona Staples' artwork is so, so awesome. I love it in Saga. That's a great sci-fi book. But it works so well here, too, because it's grounded, it's pretty realistic, and yet it's still got some cartooniness, some, some bit of expression to people's face. It's not weird when I see her art style draw Jughead's nose, sort of like, you know, long and pointed. That, is, that doesn't seem absurd to me. It just seems like it fits in this world. I really like the artwork a lot. This is, this is actually brutal at this point. This is my fifth burger. It's too much. People weren't meant to eat this many burgers. Only in cartoons. This is going to be so... I'm going to get sick after this. I just know it. I just know it. I'm seriously close to throwing up. And I've got all these burgers still. I only have to eat this one so far. But if I come across more tropes, I can't imagine, I can't imagine eating more than eight burgers. I mean, I could make more burgers, but, oh my God, what was I thinking? Let's keep reading. So now we cut back to that construction site, and three of Archie's friends are there looking for work, and there's a huge line to get work, but they say that they have a plan. Uh, the three friends are Kevin, Dilton, and it looks like maybe Raj. So basically the plan is they want to try to all get jobs before Archie can, because they want to protect him from himself. They know how clumsy he is. They're afraid that he would get hurt if he got hired on a construction site. So they're only going for jobs. Oh. This is too much food. They're only going for jobs to uh, prevent Archie. But one of them looks through binoculars to the end of the line and sees that Archie, unfortunately, has already got a job. So their plan has changed. Uh, by the way, we do hit another trope here, unfortunately for me. Dilton, ever the nerd, delivers this over-the-top sentence. There exists a finite number of temporary labor positions available, correct? We simply diminish Archie's probability of success by taking jobs ourselves. So Archie's friends change their plan, they get jobs there, and they try to protect Archie from his own clumsiness. And yet, Archie still manages to cause a huge accident. He takes a nail gun away from Dilton and says, you have to be safe and always point it upwards. But then he manages to uh, knock down a huge globe, part of a, like, a sort of a statue that was being built. It rolls down, causes tons of damage. So, <clears throat> oh. we have a scheme backfiring. Did I ever even show this? I started eating the burger, but there's also the Dilton nerd speak. I ate that burger, though. I already ate that burger. I'm going to hang this up, and we've got the uh, scheme of Archie's friends backfiring. Let's put these up. I need a minute. This is my eighth cheeseburger. I skipped lunch today knowing that I was going to do this video. I thought it would make it easier. I don't think so. My stomach is killing me. I can only take tiny little bites. It hurts so much. We 
can't hit any more tropes. We just can't. So it's late at night and Archie is uh, the only one still working at the construction site. Basically he feels bad for the damage he caused so he's working late without pay. He got fired but he's trying to clean up his own mess. So Archie looks and uh, late at night Mr. Lodge comes to check on the progress of his manor and he's brought his daughter Veronica. Now, this is the first time Archie's seen her and he just basically swoons. He's just like wow you know she's gorgeous. And he's spinning around being all silly. Oh, I can't breathe. Anyway, he's got a, a big uh, plywood beam. He's got a big beam of wood across his shoulders, and he knocks on uh, the um, <laughs> one of the uh, tractors. <laughs> and the tractor drives right through the center of the manor, the, the, the mansion that's being built, knocking everything down. I mean, we already used the Archie is clumsy trope, but uh, that goes hand in hand with him usually breaking something valuable of Mr. Lodge's. Now, usually that's just something like an urn, or maybe he dents the car, you know, something like that. He breaks some furniture. But in this case, he's not down Mr. Lodge's entire house. And uh, he's like ready to kill Archie, who he only sees sort of as a shadow up on the hill. Veronica thinks it's kind of funny. Gives us a little insight into her personality. She, she's, she's got a little bit of a, a, a sort of a dangerous, impish side. And uh, Archie goes running for his life. <laughs> he gets home and his dad has got his car running. And he's like, you know, my car was all broken down. How did this happen? And he's like, oh, you know, you're not a mechanic. Maybe you misdiagnosed the problem. And we see his dad sort of give a wink uh, up next door. Uh, Betty has fixed it. Betty was having trouble with, you know, where she was. She wanted to feel better about herself. She wanted to fix something. So she fixed Archie's car, we see. Because even though she's all dressed up and ready for the dance, her hand has oil all over it. Um, now we already used, or we mentioned, that Betty is a great mechanic, but here we definitely have that 100% confirmed. That's one of her skills. And, uh, and I kind of like that, that she didn't necessarily do it for Archie. She, she did it for herself. Um, so that's kind of sweet. That, I like that. And we end with uh, Betty enjoying the party at her house, and it says uh, continued next issue. Now, every other Archie story I've ever read until a few years ago would always just like every eight pages or four pages, it would just be like end. And there would be no carrying over of anything. The only stuff that would carry over would be if they introduced a new character. You could sometimes keep seeing that character until they faded away. Oh my god, I'm so glad this issue is over because I love this comic. This is a blast. It's so good. But that was so much food. I feel terrible. I, I'm, I'm positive I'm going to end up throwing up and I don't want to, but I'm positive I'm going to. I'm getting some heartburn. I need to drink some Pepto. Uh, this was absolutely brutal. So we came across eight tropes. Eight tropes. Uh, it was a pretty rough issue. I hope you enjoyed it. But for my money, Archie these days, fantastic, very fun comic. I thought this was a great read. I love the artwork. And if the TV show is a little bit close to this, I'm interested. So I'm definitely going to check out the pilot this week. Let me know what you think of Archie, what your experience with the character has been. Until next week, keep reading comics.